win a lot with a little scratch. Play the PNC United way to win. Win up to $1,000 instantly. One of 300,000 product prizes or the $10,000 grand prize. Donation is just a dollar and every dollar goes directly to the United Way. So scratch them to match them. Get three like prizes and win. United Way. Sometimes people can't see the forest for the trees. You've seen those ads showing how Chevy trucks perform better, handle better, and are priced better than the competition. But prove it to yourself. Test drive a Chevy. And right now, your heart of New York Chevy dealers will throw in a bed lighter worth over $300 when you buy an S10 or a full-size pickup. So go for it. Test drive a Chevy. You'll see that other trucks just don't cut it. Join us weekdays at 5.30. Sponsored in part by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Nissan cars and trucks built for the most important race, the human race. By Goldberg's, your money saver, and by Pizza Hut, making it great. Good afternoon. Welcome to a special edition of Sports Plus. This is Mike Tirico after Syracuse. Big win, 45-20 over Boston College to move the Orange to 8-1 on the season and virtually assure that New Year's Day bowl game. Right now, John Eves is standing by at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Let's go to John right now. John? Thank you very much, Michael. And standing by with me, of course, head coach Dick McPherson. Coach, it looked a little bit like uh, last year's game. They uh, got off to the quick 10-0 lead, but your team hung in there. I think a little different this year because last year they did it. This year we helped them. But as the thing started going along, it might have helped us because uh, we got behind, we had to settle in, and I liked the way they reacted and came back. Uh, I'm glad it's over. Now here we go to West Virginia. All right, let's talk. Yesterday we talked a little bit about the bowl situation. Let's talk about that. Well, I, I don't, you have to talk to Jake okay. about the bowl. I mean, right. I really don't know that, John. All right. Talk to Jake, but let me say this. I know we're going to a bowl. I don't know where we're going, and I'm anxious to see. All right, Deval Glover, a great football game today. Deval, uh, you know, I just think our receivers are great. I thought that uh, the first uh, touch, the first play of the game is my fault because uh, I didn't cover what happened to them with, with Todd, and so I have to take the blame for that. If I had just covered it with him, I'd have felt a lot better. Marcus Paul now the all-time career interception leader. And uh, it was a great interception, and uh, I'm just glad it's over because now I think you'll find that he'll get a lot more of them. He really will because he was pressing for that one. I know you want to get in with the kids. Again, congratulations, Coach. Seven wins in a row. And uh, I just think it's beautiful, and uh, I'm not I'm not in range to leave you, John. I love it here. All right. See you later. All right, Coach. Thanks an awful yeah. lot. Michael, we're going to go in the locker room and see if we can get a couple players to come out. And uh, also, as we said last night, Syracuse, it's unofficial. They're not saying much, but we know that it'll be official a week from today. Uh, Syracuse headed for the Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa on January 2nd. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame Bowl scouts were the only ones in attendance today. So, Mike, we'll try to get one of those scouts for you and be back a little bit later on the show. Back to you in Syracuse. Okay, John, stand by. We'll be back to you in Newton, Massachusetts momentarily. While John gets gathered, why don't we get a look at the highlights from this afternoon's game at Boston College. Syracuse getting off to the bad start, as Max said. Todd Philcox tries to go deep to Rob Moore on the first play from scrimmage with BC safety Eddie Duran Duran. He tells you now it's an interception, picks off the pass. SU defense holds, BC had trouble punting the ball. This time they got lucky. David Rooney off the bad snap, moves it forward 19 yards to the orange 20. Setting up a Brian Lowe 32-yard field goal, 3-0 early on the Eagles' lead. SU's next possession after a nice game, Phil Cox fumbles the ball, and BC will recover it. So two drives for Syracuse, and the orange had uh, given the ball away twice, and Coach Mack, who's happy now, was unhappy at that point. The Eagles will come back, and they'll drive down the field, and their fullback Ed Toner drives over the top. The touchdown, Eagles leading 10-0, opportunistic in the early going. Late stages, first quarter, though, SU's defense really turned this game around momentum-wise, stopping BC on three plays, and it sets it up for the offense. Darrell Johnston, who was over 140 yards today, runs up the middle for 21 yards. To the Boston College 19, four plays later, Rob Drum scores from five yards out, cutting the BC lead to 10-7. The Eagles next got a possession and got the ball back, and punting still a problem. Bad snap on the punt this time, Rooney not quite as fortunate. He's tackled by Rob Thompson at his own 25, then Phil Cox. Goes to Deval Glover for a first down. Great catch by Glover, just to the Eagle two. And two plays later, DJ dives over the top. Darrell Johnson's touchdown, 14-10. Syracuse leads for the remainder of the game. Two minutes left in the first half. Eagles drive back down the field, and as we told you, Marcus Paul intercepts. Power and he becomes the all-time SU career interception leader. 
Syracuse gets the ball with less than two minutes left, but they didn't sit on it. They drive. Phil Cox to Daryl Johnson three times in the drive. This on third down gets him in position to keep going. And with 13 seconds left, Phil Cox to Rob Moore. Ten plays, 92 yards in a minute, 46. Syracuse, 21-10 at the half. Moving us to the second half, and we'll get to those highlights when we return on the show. We'll take a look at the bowl situation, how the bowls are setting up. Go back to Boston, but next, we will have a live report from the Carrier Dome on today's Section 3 high school football playoffs. It's a special edition of Sports Plus. We'll be back with more after this. Pizza Hut announces a very special deal. Right now, our large specialty pizzas are just $9.99 each. Get a cheese lover's pizza, smothered in layers of cheese and toppings. Or a meat lover's pizza, loaded with six delicious meats. Or even a supreme pizza, pile high with mouth-watering toppings. At just $9.99 each, our large specialty pizzas come with a price you really eat up. Pizza Hut. rougher than others. For them, we offer the Nissan Pathfinder and Hard Body Truck, and a free NFL Tough Guys video with a Pathfinder or Hard Body Test Drive. See your nearest Nissan dealer if you think you're ready to play. And welcome back to a special edition of Sports Plus. Syracuse beating Boston College 45-20 as advertised the second half highlights from Newton, Massachusetts this afternoon. Let's get a look. Syracuse leading at the break 21-10. New quarterback in for the Eagles, Willie Hicks, and he added some spark to Boston College, eluding the rush, going 13 yards on this play to Syracuse's 35. That drive stalls, but Brian Lowe, the uh, excellent BC kicker, hits a 47-yarder. SU's lead at that point, 21-13. The orange offense picking up where it left off in the first half. Here's a screen pass to Deval Glover, makes a nice catch. Good blocking ahead by the offensive line. He goes 25 yards for the touchdown. One of the three scores for Glover. Syracuse up 27-13 at that point. Now, Phil Cox did throw a couple of interceptions today, something he hasn't been doing of late. This is uh, just a poor pass, and Steve Williams takes it, goes the other way. The Boston College DB, 62 yards for the score, 28-20. Syracuse's lead at that point. But SU comes back, gets the ball back, stays on the ground. Daryl Johnston on this draw for 28 yards, moves it to the BC 12, and Syracuse was in pretty good shape. They would score off this a field goal, making it 31-20. Punt formation again. BC this time had a play wide open. They could have got back in the game, but the punter Rooney throws an incomplete pass. Syracuse capitalizing. Glover to Phil Cox. Nice move. Uh, rather, Phil Cox to Glover. Nice move by Glover. Goes in 23 yards. Syracuse leads 38-20 to 20 at this point. And then the Orange get Billy Shar in the game to close it out. And for the second straight week, Shar throws a touchdown pass. 22 yards. Glover's third catch. Syracuse a winner. The final score, Orange 45, Boston College 20. So that's the story of the SU win, and like we said, we'll try to go back to John a little bit later in the show. Well, this is also the first big weekend of high school football playoff action in the Dome with eight semifinals and one final over the next 24 hours in the Carrier Dome, where George Casteris is standing by live with the wrap-up of the first two games of the day. George. Okay, Mike, uh, things started very early this morning around 10 o'clock, five games in all, and we'll start it off with the Westmoreland-Onondaga game, the first game of the day. 
Running back Greg Williams having a great day for the Bulldogs. He scores on a five-yard touchdown run, and Westmoreland goes on top 21-0. In the fourth quarter, Onondaga has the ball, first and goal on the Westmoreland two-yard line, but they fumble. Rich Jones recovers the ball as the Bulldogs go on to win the Class D semifinal game 21-0. This football team I have this year, you know, we went 8-0, won the league, and I told them that they're a great football team, but that team two years ago, we won that first game, made it to the final. So they came out today, and they wanted to show themselves that they're a good football team, and they certainly saw a lot of good football out there today. We wanted to get by this. All the younger guys were nervous. We've been here. We were here as sophomores, all as seniors, so we were used to it. So we just want to get by this one. Okay, so Westmoreland will play the Oriskany Sandy Creek winner that game tomorrow. Uh, and they'll play next week for the championship. And game two, the Class C game, Lowville and Mount Markham. It was tied at six at the end of regulation, and then Mount Markham, uh, or excuse me, Lowville won the game. Tom McGrath on a 10-yard touchdown run in the second overtime. And right now, going on behind me is the Class B game, semifinal game. Casanova just scored to make it 6 nothing, and uh, we'll be back with a preview of the big game, the double-A game, tonight uh, when we come back a little bit later in the show. Let's go back to Mike. Okay, George, stand by there at the dome. We'll get back to you for a preview of that exciting game tonight, which will be coming up later on. Should be a pretty good game. West Genesee taking on RFA. RFA has been the successful team all year. Right now, why don't we move through the top 20 of college football, see what's going on today. We'll start at the top with number one, Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are idle this afternoon, probably on their way to the Fiesta Bowl against West Virginia. Next week, Notre Dame takes on Penn State, a game you can see live here on TV5. Number two, USC taking on Arizona State. That game just underway and scoreless in the first quarter. USC at 8-0. Of course, they're looking ahead for that UCLA showdown next week. Miami of Florida, the Hurricanes of Jimmy Johnson, idle this afternoon at 7-1. and one, They take on LSU next week, which will also be a pretty exciting game. It's part of a cable doubleheader right after the Syracuse-West Virginia game. Speaking of the Mountaineers, Don Nealon's team looking to move to 10-0. and 0, And right now they lead 28-13 in the third. Major Harris. Albeit a hip injury, has thrown for two touchdown passes. Rutgers had a 92-yard kickoff return trying to pull the upset at the Meadowlands, but West Virginia is currently in the lead. Tonight, Virginia Tech will go down to Florida State and play Bobby Bowden's Seminoles. Nobody wants to do that after Bobby Bowden's team won 59 to nothing last week over South Carolina. UCLA just underway with Stanford. The Cardinal and the Bruins scoreless in the first quarter. UCLA, 20-point favorite heading to that USC showdown. Nebraska and Colorado and the Buffaloes now. A quick 7-0 lead in that game. Bill McCartney's team at 7-2 and on the season. They're looking to pull an upset. Colorado probably has to win this game to get into a bowl, and they're trying to move out of the little two, or the little six, I should say, in the Big Eight with the Big Two, Nebraska and Oklahoma. Speaking of the Sooners of Oklahoma, they and Missouri play right now 10 nothing. I see Oklahoma ahead of Missouri in the first. Woody Woodenhofer, 2-6. and six. Looks like he is in trouble out there. Georgia and Auburn at the only one game in the top 20, pitting top 20 teams this afternoon. They are in Auburn, and uh, it's a pretty interesting game. They're battling for second place behind LSU in the Southeastern Conference. Ninth-ranked Tigers hosting number 17, Georgia. We do have highlights of this game. It is just underway. We'll be joining this game a little bit later on. The Bulldog out in force in Georgia this afternoon. Here's the only touchdown in the early going. Johnson passes to John Thomas. What a great catch by John Thomas in the end zone for the touchdown right now. Georgia has the lead in that game, 7-0. They are in the first quarter, and as I said, we'll be joining that game in progress immediately after our broadcast right here. Number 10, Wyoming, is playing Houston tonight in Houston, 8 o'clock. These two teams average more than 45 points per game on offense. This should be an offensive showdown. The Razorbacks of Arkansas lead Texas A&M 14-0. Arkansas already has the Southwest Conference title locked up. Texas A&M, of course, on probation all year, so even if they did have a great Southwest Conference season and they are undefeated, they can't get that automatic berth to the Cotton Bowl or to any bowl. Michigan taking on Illinois at Ann Arbor, looking to earn the Rose Bowl bid. The Wolverines hosting Illinois. And Illinois is still in that Big Ten hunt as well. We'll pick this game up, 17-3 at halftime, Michigan ahead, and the Wolverines make it 24-3. Gerard Bunch with the run over the left side, a couple of yards out in front of the 100,000 at Ann Arbor. Michigan in the lead. If the Wolverines hang on to win this game, they're now up 38-9. It looks like Michigan will be going to the Rose Bowl, and Bo is back in Pasadena on New Year's Day. I think you know Syracuse beat Boston College, so we don't have to tell you that 45-20, the final on that one. LSU and Mississippi State, back to the SEC, where we mentioned a moment ago the driver's seat belonged to the Bayou Bengals, hoping to clinch a share of the league title today in Starkville, Mississippi, against Mississippi State and the Bulldogs of Rocky Felker. Highlights of that one, LSU out of the gate early, taking a 7-3 lead. Mickey Guidry hits Calvin Windham. At the Mississippi three, that's a 31-yard gain. Three plays later, Victor James 
gives LSU a 7-3 lead. LSU can clinch for the title, and it looks like they will. They lead this game right now. LSU on top and cruising down in the bayou today. 23 now that game in the fourth quarter. The Jayhawks of Kansas against Oklahoma State and Pat Jones's team. Right now it is Oklahoma State in the advantage in the early going of that one. Let's move on to Clemson and Maryland. And boy, Clemson beating up on Maryland. The trip to the Gator Bowl on the line in the SEC. Title game in College Park where former SU opponent Maryland trying to pull the upset of Clemson at Bird Stadium. And Clemson actually got off to the big play start. Down early in this game, 7 nothing. as a matter of fact. This is Gary Cooper taking the reverse. Goes 52 yards off the blocks for the touchdown. And Clemson had the lead at that point. But Maryland will come back in the second quarter. Their good quarterback, Neil O'Donnell, is having a pretty good game. He hits Ricky Jackson for a touchdown. But since then, it has been all Clemson. Clemson on the way to winning the SEC title. Other scores. BYU and Air Force meeting out in the whack, and BYU tries to hang on to their bowl hopes. They are trailing Alabama Idol today. Number 19 are the Crimson Tide. And that will do it for our scores. When our special edition of Sports Plus continues, we go back to the Dome for a high school football update. And George Gasteris will be back with a preview of the Class AA Finals coming up tonight in the Dome. Special edition of Sports Plus. We're live and we're back in two minutes. I never looked at professional football as a popularity contest. I look at it as my job. I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. Come on! Some people like to play rougher than others. For them, we offer the Nissan Pathfinder and Hard Body Truck and a free NFL Tough Guys video with a Pathfinder or Hard Body Test Drive. See your nearest Nissan dealer if you think you're ready to play. Pizza Hut announces a very special deal. Right now, our large specialty pizzas are just $9.99 each. Get a cheese lover's pizza, smothered in layers of cheese and toppings. Or a meat lover's pizza, loaded with six delicious meats. Or even a supreme pizza, piled high with mouth-watering toppings. At just $9.99 each, our large specialty pizzas come with a price you really eat up. Pizza Hut! taste of Pepsi without caffeine. Try caffeine-free Pepsi. And welcome back. We are live at the TV5 studios after Syracuse beats Boston College and all the bowl talk. Everybody says how the Hall of Fame Bowl is a definite. Well, let's find out from uh, the man in charge of the Hall of Fame Bowl. He's with John Eves. Let's go back to Newton right now. John? All righty, Michael. Let's pose that question to Maury Omens, a 59 graduate, we might add, of uh, Syracuse University, part of that national championship team. Maury, I guess officially you can't say anything until a week from today, but the Hall of Fame are the only scouts down here. Unofficially, Syracuse is headed for Tampa on January 2nd. I would sure hope so. I mean, officially, I can say, come on, Syracuse. You know, <laughs> I mean, I think uh, from Syracuse's point of view, there's an NCAA regulation that says that they have to wait until the 19th, which will which will be just before the ball game at West Virginia. So we sure want them. Uh, they're an exciting team. It, it reminds me a lot of 59, you know, and it brings back the memories of the, the glory years of Syracuse. They're here again, and and I'm just, just ecstatic over that. You know, you were sitting a couple seats down for me during the football game and uh, you got a little bit of nervousness there when uh, BC jumped out to the lead but Syracuse an exciting team well yeah I, I think when you sit up in the press box you're supposed to be laid back you know <laughs> they tell you, you take, relax I couldn't I uh, I was excited I was excited when they scored and uh, you know that's that comes from the heart because I'm a Syracuse person I was born and raised there so I'm excited about it. you see I got my orange on already all right of course uh, Syracuse an exciting team Mike uh, Marley was asking me if you can give us an update I hope you might have it on that uh, Auburn uh, 
uh, Georgia situation because they, one of those two teams may uh, actually play Syracuse. Yeah, that's right. I would, uh, my guess is that it would either be Auburn or LSU if those were the two teams. Uh, if, uh, if Auburn wins, then we lose them. If, uh, if, they, if Georgia wins, however, we got a good shot at it. Can you imagine starting the clock at 16-16 with five seconds left? <laughs> and let's continue it from there. All righty. That'd uh, be exciting. All right, we'll see you next week in West Virginia. Thanks. Mike, we'll try to maybe grab another player, too, but in the meantime, we're going to throw it back to you in Syracuse. Okay, John, you can pass the update along to Maury. 7 nothing. Georgia leads Auburn. Early second quarter. Order, that game will be coming right at you quarter. in a little while. Okay. As John talks to Maury, we'll come back here. Why don't we talk about some other games that are going on? SU opponents and the local schools also in action this Saturday, and we'll pick it up with South Carolina and Navy. The Gamecocks now lead 6 0. We have an update. It's 13 0. Just handed to me. South Carolina trying to bounce back after that 59 to nothing loss to the hands of Florida State last week. Pittsburgh and Penn State. Do you believe that Penn State could go to a bowl game? It's possible. A Joe Paterno team win this afternoon at State College it means Penn State will avoid having the first losing season in the Paterno. No era. Other SU opponents, Ohio State and Iowa playing out in the Big Ten, 21 apiece right now in Iowa in the rain in the fourth quarter. Ohio State maybe looking ahead to Michigan next week. Iowa still has some ball hopes. Temple and Akron play tonight. Jerry Faust is the coach of Akron. Remember, he, of course, was the coach at Notre Dame. The local schools, why don't we pick up with Cornell leading Columbia now 35-10. to 10. Aaron Samita has thrown two touchdown passes today. Scott Malaga, the Ivy League Player of the Week last week is run for two. Cornell's also scored on a block punt. Columbia was ahead 10-0 at that point. If Cornell wins, which they should, and Penn wins, then they set up a Ivy League title showdown next week at Sholkoff. Other games, Colgate losing to William & Mary, 14-0. It's been a struggle for Mike Foley's team. Only two wins on the season. The Ithaca Bombers beating Washington and Jefferson 21-3. Mike Pascal with a touchdown run. If Ithaca should hang on to win, in all likelihood, they will be going to the Division III playoffs with the seedings announced tomorrow. And Cortland State, who pulled off the big upset of Ithaca last week, leading the Red Dragons now lead St. John Fisher 24-10. That game at the half, that game in the Rochester area. As we mentioned, it is a big day and night of high school football. Sectional style in the Carrier Dome. Let's head back to the Dome. George Castare is joining us for a preview of tonight's big game. George? That's right, Mike. Tonight at 8 o'clock, it's the big one, the Class AA Championship, where West Genesee will take on the perennial powerhouses of Section 3 football, Rome Free Academy. Football practice in mid-November isn't something that happens very often for the West Genesee football team, but they aren't complaining. The team's getting ready for a shot at the Section 3 Class AA Championship. But to do that, Joe Carruthers' team has to beat the Black Knights of RFA. RFA is a great team, and of course they got a great football tradition there. And uh, we're going to have to play our best to beat them, but uh, uh, the kids would rather play the best, uh, and they certainly are. So. When the two teams met earlier this season, RFA won a close one, giving the Wildcats their only league loss of the season. But the West Genesee players learned a very important lesson that night. They're a lot bigger than we were, but they didn't run us over. So we know, we know that we can stick it in there and just play. The first time we played them, you know, we were kind of unsure, you know, if we can play it. And we found out that we could stick with them and we played with them really tough. And I think we got a good chance. A chance to make up for the loss and reach a goal they set way before the season started. It's really been the driving force trying to get here. You know, we all felt that this was our year. The whole team's fired up. We, West Genesee hasn't been in, to the Dome since 82, and we just want to keep the tradition going. Just to let you know, an update on the Class B game. Uh, Casanova is up 14-0 over Marcellus. And also the uh, New Hartford JD, the Class A game, will be up at 5.30, and then the big one tonight at 8, the AA Championship game, West Jenny and Rome Free Academy. Let's go back to Mike in the studio. And only four more games back at the Dome tomorrow, right? I'm sorry, Mike? Only four more games up there at the Dome tomorrow after all this today, right? That's right. So, uh, and then again next weekend. So uh, if you like high school football, come on down. <laughs> and the price is right. We will be back to wrap up this special edition of Sports Plus. We'll have more on the Syracuse win at Boston College. Stay with us. We'll be back after this. I never looked at professional football as a popularity contest. I look at it as my job. I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. Come on! Some people like to play rougher than others. For them, we offer the Nissan Pathfinder and Hard Body Truck and a free NFL Tough Guys video with a Pathfinder or Hard Body Test Drive. See your nearest Nissan dealer if you think you're ready to play.
Because they're boys, dear. Hey, her lack of stuff. What they do is they start to talk about girls. What's your name? Teresa. Mine's Theo. That gets them all excited. Then they don't know what to do with each other, so they start throwing each other up against the wall. Monday at 7 on WTVH5. For generations, Syracuse University football has met athletic competition at the highest level. This is Jim Ridlon. Next fall, when the university celebrates its 100th season of football, I'll be creating a large wall sculpture, similar to the one I did for ABC Sports, to commemorate the occasion. Memorabilia from past seasons is needed for this landmark sculpture. Your donation will help keep alive the memories of the proud tradition that is Syracuse football. Sponsored in part by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Nissan cars and trucks built for the most important race, the human race. By Goldberg's Your Money Saver and by Pizza Hut, making it great. And welcome back to the TV5 studios for the final time. This is Mike Tirico. Syracuse beating Boston College 45-20. to With the win, Syracuse is now 8-1. and one, And for the first time in eight years, the road team of the Syracuse-BC game has won the game. It's been a while since Syracuse has won in Boston. The last five tries, Syracuse has come up losers in Beantown, but they win at Alumni Stadium today in impressive fashion. And although Todd Philcox did throw three interceptions, he did lead the offense. The offense looked good, and the defense, I think, was the key to this game. They came up strong when they had to to win the game. So Syracuse a victory. We will not go back to John Eves in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. We'll hear from him later on tonight on Sports Plus at 11:20. We hope you join us for News Center 5 at 6, which comes up immediately following the game we're going to go to in a few minutes. Auburn and Georgia and the Bulldogs still lead that game 7 nothing. We showed you the touchdown. Brett Musburger and company are in Alabama and we'll join them in a couple of moments. Thanks to everyone who helped us out with this special edition of Sports Plus. I'm Mike Tirico. We'll see you back tonight at 6 and at 11:20. Have a good night everybody. is a very special deal. Right now, our large specialty pizzas are just $9.99 each. Get a cheese lover's pizza smothered in layers of cheese and toppings. Or a meat lover's pizza loaded with six delicious meats. Or even a supreme pizza piled high with mouth-watering toppings. At just $9.99 each, our large specialty pizzas come with a price you really eat up. Pizza Hut, waiting for just the right time to make a great deal on a new Ford? Your time has come. Now is the perfect time to buy a 1988 Ford Ranger because while supplies last, you can get $500 cash back direct from Ford. For less than $7,000, you can own the best-selling compact pickup in the country. Ford Ranger, built fun tough and now equipped with $500 cash back. Test drive a new Ford today before your time runs out. Your local Ford dealer is out to win you over. Here at News Center 5, when we say we put more news in the news, we mean it. Throughout the day, we're hard at work putting together Central New York's most complete newscasts at 5.30 and 6 o'clock. In these days, when the need for information is growing, it's good to have some place to turn to to get the information you need. Putting more news in the news. At News Center 5, that's not just our job, it's our promise to you. We put more news in the news. News Center 5 at 5.30 and 6 o'clock. 
Families belong on TV5. Watch Kate and Allie weekdays at 5 on TV5. And Slack stands in the pocket, dropped by Tillman. Blakeney, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, thought the tight end was going to be open today. He has been. That time, Tillman really played like a tight end for the short route, but he dropped the ball. 